thought I'd do a walk around video of the boat so you can see it. Um, just kind of point out some of the problems to be very upfront about them. Um, nothing here is really a problem. It's actually uh, windshield works good. Nothing a problem up here. This light is brand new. Um, but I never take it out at night so it doesn't really matter. But it's brand new and it works. Um, boat is currently registered. Um, here is the front of the trailer. That's a new spare tire. The rim's not new, but the tire is new. Um, this is a new winch, new strap, um, and I have a you know secondary chain there just for safety. It's just kind of wrapped around. It's nothing very formal. And that tire, spare tire, I just have it chained on rather than any type of you know nice looking clip or something to hold it. I just have it chained around. Um, here's the hitch. It does have brakes, but I you know disconnected the brakes and put this uh, coupler for a standard two inch ball. The hitch that was on it before, the coupler before that's made to work with the brakes was uh, not working and it actually got stuck on my balls. So I had to get the thing off of there and I just took it off and replaced it with this little coupler. The boat only weighs a couple thousand pounds and the trailer's not that heavy so I don't think you really even need brakes for this um, boat. I, I certainly don't. I pull up with my truck and I don't have any trouble. Um, the trailer is very solid. Um, this is some very thick steel uh, C-beams. Everything's okay. The, some rust there. That's where a chrome plate is missing from the top. It was rusted underneath, but nothing there. Um, this is the boat here. It has a you know, sliding window. All this is functional on this side. On the other side, the sliding window is broken and has been removed. Um, I've already I repainted, sanded and painted this boat. Of course, you can see I got a good scratch there down the side out on my first time out. I ran it up against the dock too hard. And the tires are worn but functional. Um, I got new lights, you know, all the way around it. All these are, you know, submersible LED lights. Here's some more lights. Here's the transom. This transom is rock solid and it's got a you know, a kicker bracket on there. This six little six horsepower is not included in the sale, at least not for the price listed. But this boat didn't have any rod on it. It's just kind of been sitting up with nothing happening. So like one way I could tell was I like would crank down on this, you know, just really pushing on the foot and cranking is hard to do while filming. But you could uh, shake this motor really good and and the transom didn't give it all or anything. And when I tap on it with a ball peen hammer, it sounds solid to me. So you can take a look and see what you think. But you know. It's, They've been sitting up for 10 years with no activity. This motor is a um, Johnson VRO, v, VRO V4. It's 100 horsepower. It took me a while to figure out what horsepower it was because when you look, and I think the serial number's back here, when you plug that serial number in and you look and see using their intro, their little thing, it's like you could tell it's an 87. But it's like they didn't make 100 horsepower in the 87. So I took it to the boat dealership. So this is the 87, I can't tell what horsepower it is. And they said, oh, that's because this is a commercial grade one that basically the foot and all, everything from the motor down is like heavier duty and it wasn't, you know, just a consumer grade motor. So I don't know why this guy had a commercial grade motor on it, but it's, um, there it is, works fine. Here's the other side of the trailer. Again, worn tires, but functional, no leaks. This is the side of the boat here. Um, this is the sliding glass window. That is no more. It was broken. So I just took it out. It doesn't really bother me. Um, I guess it could be replaced, but it was more than I wanted to bite off. Um, and the other side of the boat. Now you can see up under this boat that I painted, you know, everything up here was I painted good. There's another scuff from me running into the dock too hard. Um, but uh, the gel coat was all faded, so I stripped it. However, way up under the bottom, and like you can see right here, this part of the gel coat is in very good shape. And uh, even in the very back, let me see if I can show you that. You know, this gel coat is good. Um, it did have a little bit of a scuff there and I refiberglass that part and uh, it looks like they had just run it up on 
some rocks. It wasn't through the fiberglass, but it did was kind of scratched there. So I refiberglassed it and uh, and sanded it down. I made it nice and smooth just for I don't know, just for make it last longer. Um, there's all that. Now I can start the motor up. You know, I don't have it have it hooked up uh, to the ears to show you that the water pump works, but I'm happy to show you that if you come and look. But here's the key, and then give it a little bit of gas. enough of that I don't want to run it without any water but it it fires up it's kind of a you know you can see there a little bit of a cold start um, inside the boat I stripped everything out I stripped out all the carpet and I put down this rhino liner just kind of like a aftermarket truck bed liner that you can put in here we are inside the cuddy cabin um, again I took all the cushions out of here and I recut the plywood seats and uh, installed them all with uh, you know stainless steel hardware. Everything I did, I did with stainless steel, just so it lasts, especially out in salt water. Um, I rewired it, but you see, there's some things I haven't finished. Like this is the wiring that goes to the front. It just needs to be tacked up there, kind of like how I tacked this up. I just haven't gotten around to it, honestly. It's not a not a hard thing to do. Um, so that's the inside of the cuddy cabin. There's, you know, storage up under these seats. I got life jackets over there. Over here, I got chairs. Got a couple chairs because actually I had decided back here. This is where the, let's see if I can do this. You know, the chairs would be right here in front of the, drive by the driver's side and over here. But I, I didn't really want the chairs there. I felt like they were just in the way. Uh, and they make it harder to move around the boat and and when I'm out doing stuff, I'm out. I'm up on my feet doing things. So I, I didn't really want them. So I had a couple chairs in there that I was just going to use for fold-out chairs if I wanted to sit down. This is the wire um, where the running light goes, which, again, it's just needs to be plugged in and screwed down. I have the light. I just haven't done it because, honestly, I don't, I don't go out in the ocean at night. So I never really need the running lights. As far as up here on the dash, um, Installed this thing switch panel with a charger port there, and this is the this is actually the old RPM gauge that I just put back in, but I haven't connected it. It's, it's supposedly still functional, and this is the base for the um, fish finder. Just need to again, I don't just keep it out here, but it's all there. And then down below, you can see you know I installed this bus bar. And everything is already hooked up to that switch. So, you know, whatever electronics you want, you can just kind of plug them in. And uh, it's already got power up here, nice and neat. Um, and it can be controlled by that switch plate right there. If you want to add some additional lights or radar or whatever, whatever you want. This is all the OMC controls. Everything's functional. All the, all the wiring, you know, as I encased it and put it in, you know, all this stuff just to try to neaten it up a little. This is a rope. This is a new battery box with a, you know, a new deep cycle battery. Um, and there's here. Oh, this reminds me, I didn't say this was a problem, but it, it is, I hope it's not a problem anymore. Um, this, when I took this boat out, it would you know, run, idled just fine, ran, but when I got it up on the plane, after being up on a plane for a few minutes, it started sucking the bubble dry. So I'd have to, you know, reach around and just pump the bubble a couple times like this, and it'd keep going, but it would just kind of act like it wanted to die, and i just, you know, pump the bubble. So I took it to the guys at Belmont Boats, they says, oh, you know, it'll be expensive for us to, um, you know, because they charge whatever they charge for labor. He said, this is going to be an easy fix. All you got to do is, uh, if you're having to pump the bubble, it's not any gas. That means you got an air leak, so it's sucking air somewhere. So what I did, and you can see, was I went back and I put this um, thread around all of these things. And I retightened each of these fittings, which is what they told me to do. 
and I you know put thread down here on this brand new gas tank because I had installed all this and, and likely what happened was I just didn't have a, a good seal so um, I haven't taken it back out since I did that so this is all brand new you know tighten this up a little more tighten up these things put the thread so I would also I uh, put a little oil around the ring of this you know fuel water separator and tighten that up so that probably fixed the problem um, but yeah, it's just like when I was running, I'd have to reach around and pump the bubble a couple of times and go for a couple, few more minutes and reach around and pump the bubble. And that was kind of annoying, so hopefully that problem's fixed. Um, and then the brand new gas tank sits up on this thing and the plug is back under the bottom. Oh, it has this bilge pump too. This is a bilge pump that actually, I broke it. It was working fine and then I uh, landed a crab track on it and broke all this stuff off. So it needs, it does need a new bilge pump, but it's already wired in and the hose is there and the hose runs out this other side over here. So it just goes down in the bottom, you know, a bilge pumps are cheap. It's a matter of just putting one in. Everything's already, it's a 10 minute fix, but I'm not just kind of tired of this project, to tell you the truth. Here's the rest of the boat. Um, again, I took all the padding, all the carpet out of here and and sanded it all down and painted it and did some glassing where needed. That's basically it. Um, our boat comes with a, a cover. There's a big brand new cover for it. It's only been used a couple times. I got life jackets and I got those seats I told you about and the fish finder. And, um, you know, and whatever little stuff. I don't really care. It's not a big deal. Just kind of ready to move on to my next project and get this one out the yard. Climb out over here. So, I think I've highlighted all the problems. I want to be very upfront about those. Um, you know, it's it's you know, it's a nice boat. It's very functional. Um, it's not for taking your family out on the lake and lounging around because there's no padding in there, no good seats. Um, but it is definitely a functional and seaworthy boat for crabbing or rock fishing. Alright, thanks.